we've talked about this over the years, that the Hall of Fame is a real problem for the instructional industry. We've got many different swings in the Hall of Fame. We can take Jack Nicholas, for example, he's upright, across the line at the top, and uh, he's sitting right next to Ben Hogan, who was much flatter, kind of laid off position, we can say. Almost could be different looking back. So all my arms in the club. 100% right, but they're both two of the greatest players that ever played the game. Like, we have people like Lee Trevino, who had a shut face, strong grip, and you got guys like Adam Scott, much more neutral, that very standard looking swing. Question is, who's right with those mm -hmm. guys? And that's the problem, because they're all right, because they're such great players, right? Our job in the instructional industry is to pull out those things that those guys did, the commonalities, even though they look so much different, or look, they look so different. Easy to explain Adam Scott, a little bit more difficult to explain Lee Trevino. And I think this is with coaching, we can be much more flexible with our approach, because we're not married to a certain aesthetic that we prefer, we're actually trying to teach from more of a principles perspective. That's right, there's aesthetic of what a guy looks like, and then there's functionality, right? We gotta understand what are the things that make those swings function. You're known as a great ball striker. Around the greens throughout your career, you've had some ups and downs. Recently on the Champions Tour, you've really kind of come into your own. But can you take us through a little bit of this evolution that you've had with your own short game? Well, firstly, you know, I live in Florida and we have to deal with grain every day. And grain, especially into the grain chipping, can present a number of challenges. One of the big things that, or how I used to chip, and it led to some problems was, I, I would play the ball back and I'd have the handle forward and then as I'd make my motion on the downswing, I'd have this huge linear motion of the handle. Okay, when so, you say linear, you're just saying that the butt of the club and the head, it's all moving kind of as one unit. There's no rotation right. to it. That's right. So this would be linear, like that's a linear motion. This is linear, it's, there's no rotation. The other part is an angular piece where there is rotation or angular motion, I see. But, and there's no linear, this isn't moving. Okay. So what I would have is basically the handle moving on this linear motion with no rotation. Now that's all fine, if I'm gonna have the ball back, I'm gonna hit this low shot, and I'm gonna hit this kind of a shot, okay. right? It introduces the leading edge into the ground, but the ball's back, no Can't problem. get away with it. Can get away with it. Now if I start to have any elevation to the shot, I've got some problems, right? So. Coming into Florida, of course we had a lot of grain, and this introducing the leading edge into the ground, if my contact wasn't perfect, the ball could literally go a foot mm -hmm. in front of me. And so contact became iffy, you get afraid of contact, you lose the ability to make consistent contact. So I had to learn, how am I going to make a motion that stops the leading edge going into the ground, introduces more angular or a throw, less linear piece. Yep. And that way, as I came into the ball, instead of the leading edge digging into the ground, I would come into the impact where this handle would basically return to where it was at address and the club head would catch it. So it would have more of a look, instead of the one that was this way, it would have more of a look like this. Right, the ball goes up in the air. I see. Right, so there's a throw to the club head. Yes. Introduces the bounce, the bounce, which is this part of the back of the club here, um, into the, the ground, keeps leading edge, so even if it went as a little bit hit behind the ball, it would bounce off Never the ground. Never digs. Never would dig less, right? Yeah. To be able to, to slightly miss contact and still hit a good shot. So that alleviated the pressure of having to have perfect contact. Two or three people that really helped me with this, mm -hmm. there was James Rigid, James Seekman, and Tom Pernice. And there's a couple different techniques there, but it was through the exposure of those different techniques and understanding of how to apply this was really important. So. James Rigid, he resonated with me when he talked about this club head is going to move. So we're going to displace the head from address to the top of the backswing back to the ball. You can do it with just cocking your, your wrist and your, your hands don't move, the clubs move quite a bit. You can have some combination of cocking your wrists and your arms move and the shoulders, or you can have where your wrists don't really move and you have your arms and your shoulders. So you're going to find what resonates you. For example, uh, Jason Day, he does very it with little wrist. very little Steve wrist. Stricker. Steve Stricker. Great chippers of the ball, do it that way. Tom Pernice is as good of a chipper as I've ever seen as well, and he's a complete opposite. He has a lot of wrist action like this, and chips that way, and chips just fine. But the problem with that is a little more complicated, in my opinion. So what did you settle on? Why don't you, why don't you show us a little bit of each of those techniques, and yeah. talk about what you settled in on. So if I'm not hitting a lob shot, where I am gonna have a lot more wrist, right. I, I tried to do that on stand shots, it became a little bit more difficult for me, so I decided to go down the route of what James Rigid was talking about, and a little bit of James Seekman combination, where I'm gonna move the club head through 
rotation and of my forearms here to keep the face open, but not using a lot of wrist. Very little wrist. Very little wrist. So I would set up, get closer to the ball, have the face slightly open because that would allow me to use the bounce, play less loft. The handle doesn't look as far forward as it originally did. Not as far forward. All of these are the adjustments that I would make. And now I'm just gonna use rotation on my forearm, right, and shift this way. Yep. So as a recap, I would make sure that the amateur golfers understand that you've got to have this face that's got to rotate on the way back because this is how I'm going to allow the face to be open and I could come in and I'm still introducing the bounce. If that face goes back closed and I come forward now, I've got the leaning edge going back down into the ground and I'm right back into the problems that I came before. Rotate that without necessarily a lot of risk off.